Hello, hi, I'm Patricia. And today we are on the topic of Ascension. And this is really big topic for 2023. Why am I showing you this presentation on Ascension? Just as a reminder, I've got this great rooming quote. You may have heard it, but if not, here goes. Your task is not to seek for love, but merely to seek and find all the barriers within yourself that you have built against it. So even if you don't feel that you have barriers, you might feel you have blocks, you're having trouble ascending, you feel that you should be experiencing more, please come, reach out, join, have a session. That's what we're here for. We know how to do this. And we do know that while it's not easy, it's not impossible either. Thanks so much and hope to see you soon. What we're actually talking about is the evolution of humanity, the rising up of humanity. The very thing that a lot of people say, I wanna help humanity. I wanna help humanity get up and out of it. Well, there is actually a thing to know. It is in process. It is called ascension by those people in the know. That is the general term for it. But it also involves uh, heightening the vibration of the body, getting to know other aspects of your body, all of which many people are already kind of getting familiar with. Their mental side, their mental health, their emotional side, their psychological health, physical side. But there's something else beyond this, and it has to do with the actual metaphysical side or what you might call your energy body and so forth your chakras, etc. There are really ancient teachings being trotted out. And while those are an excellent basis, it is not sufficient for carrying you forward for the full aspect of evolving, growing. It goes beyond self-improvement because there are parts of you intended to sort of automate and properly function, whereas Maybe years ago, you may have believed, well, this is only limited function, and that's all. It's your vestigial side. It's your dormant DNA. That is coming alive on a lot of people. It's time to really acknowledge it and really start getting with the program and doing what I call get your together. Get it together, and I'm going to be your guide in it. I'm going to help you. And I am here to offer information. So let's kind of get into that right now. What I want to let you know about Ascension, this is something that I've noticed years ago. And I wrote this down and I journaled about it. And I want to make this sort of a simple way of explaining it. Think of yourself as though maybe you fell down and someone said to you, hey, let's uh, get over there to earth and let's just see what we can do about, you know, regaining ourselves, getting our essence back, getting everything we loved or lent out or borrowed. Let's all, all exchange it and get it back, right? Certain things knock you down. Down. This could be planetary cataclysms, it could be war, pestilence, poverty, famine, all kinds of things that are just negative to say the least. However, you are a very resilient soul and you're going to want bygones to be bygones. So what do you do? You start lifting up, you start rising up. But there is here is the thing that I noticed. You're going back up the way you went down. Now think about that for a minute. If you were climbing a tree and you fell and you hit some branches on the way, okay, and someone yanked you up by a rope, you might be passing through some of those bent branches and they, scratch, they scratched you on the way down, they scratched you on the way up. Or you fall into a crevice and the only way to really get you out is back up the way you came down. Sometimes there is not a good way to do it. However, for yourself, for your body, this means maybe you remember things. It's like remembering things from your childhood where you feel okay and all of a sudden you say, hang on a minute, I am re-experiencing something or I'm remembering the time I fell off my bike or I remember the time that I asked mom this or that and she invalidated me or I remember what my grandparents said about us being so poor and it really stuck with me and it 
totally changed my perspective and my relationship to money. I, I can't seem to get a good handle on my money relationships. So you have major stuff in your life, major areas of your life that are important for you to get back up, not the least of which is your health and your own personal evolution. So if we look at this really, in some ways, you're being taught a certain way. You're being taught that you have only these seven chakras, yoga, 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 you know, like people start with yoga. Do you know when I started with yoga? It was introduced actually as an Eastern philosophy and way of exercising into Western culture. In the United States, it was introduced um, very sparingly. People were a little leery. In fact, they were so leery, they couldn't really get the hang of it at first, much less really understand what it was doing or supposed to do for them. Now we're talking about a time where a sign of abundance and affluence was having a three martini lunch, cigarettes, cigars, you know, all of the things that are associated with a wealthy life that we are now finding out are a non-healthy life. You know, drinking that much, smoking that much, you know, doing it in excess, eating rich foods. But if you look at it historically, post-war, Many people wanted, you know, to display their affluence, their abundance, their well-to-do-ness, and yet they were not well. So this yoga thing was really kind of foreign to a lot of people. And then there was yogurt. And yogurt was a food, but a food that the closest thing most people could say was, it's close to sour cream, but it's not sour cream. But it's good for your stomach. Well, I eat healthy, right? And it really wasn't understood. And then hippie people would make their own yogurt. You know, you had these divisions of how people thought about it. And then there were the people that would say, wait a minute, what's yoga and what's yogurt? <laughs> and there would be further confusion. Yoga is a way to open up these seven chakras. Many people start with it. There's people that don't even like it. There's a reason that it appeals more to women than to men. Yes, I know there's yoga men. Yes, I know there's men that go. Here's the thing about it. When you start doing some of these movements, you start opening your connections. These are fourth dimensional connections. These are not all you have. There's more. You actually have about 30 connection points. I teach about those in my courses, in my webinars. Many people use yoga as a basis for their ascension, but yoga is for the fourth dimension. It is for the individual human body, and it is not sufficient for 5D. It does teach many of the things that a person needs to get up and running. Now, there is a phenomenon that happens when people begin studying this and doing it, because it's not just study. The real proof is in actually doing it and being active. You start opening sides of yourself. You start feeling more spiritual because it starts reconnecting you to the parts of your spirit. Now, in ascension, what if we were to take that a little bit further? This may be a shock to you. Having done yoga, it is here to stay. It is not going to bring you all of the high level experiences you need to have for your ascension. In fact, there's people having ascension experiences without even understanding its ascension experiences. There's people doing yoga for hours on end wondering why other people are being blasted open, having kundalini rushes, getting their chakras open, and they barely lifted a finger. So what's up with that? Okay, what is up with that for real? There are some things to know about your ascension. Number one, there are passive things that happen. This means that your soul is doing the lifting for you. Your soul is picking you up, brushing you off, getting you open, blasting you open, making you experience a Kundalini brush or a fabulous lucid dream or an activation where it feels like a part of you is glowing up and lighting up and pulsing and coming alive, all valid, and there's even more. And sometimes this throws people off. People who are studying such things, they take it for granted. And sometimes they get resentful because they're not having a truly deep experience. They're showing up, but those passive things aren't happening. Why not? It requires a different level of participation. 
And again, you're going back up the way you went down. This means you may have some obstacle or block or something you need to heal from, release, let go of, truly get it out of you, get it from blocking your chakras and allow you to move along. Once you have any type of elevated experience, you will need to maintain that also. What is it about yoga that also does this? Well, it helps people focus on parts of themselves and what those chakras manage, okay? But let's look again at what are some of the things that you should look for here? We're going to go to this diagram that I made, and this is to kind of let you know the progression of this. What is the progression? We look down in the lower right corner, we see 3D, the third dimension. Many people could honestly relate to this as caveman times, caveman times, cavewoman times. Listen, even as cavemen and cavewomen, we still rely on our instincts we still relied on our senses we still had parts of us that wanted to connect to otherworldly forces the divine you know something in us remember new somehow some way even if it was not refined even if we needed a third party to interpret or help us connect to ancestors now when we dreamed we dreamed in the astral plane this is why many people will dream of battles, wars, weird things, weird thought forms, mystical creatures, past life carryover from ancient times, stories, legends, truthful, kernels of truth within there. But what you have is a completely old paradigm that is closing and your ascension will go in stair steps, which means you get some of that passive rising up, and then you kind of plateau. You don't totally plateau. During the plateau period, what I would compare it to is climbing Mount Everest. You wouldn't scale Mount Everest in one day, no. You would get to a certain level with your new respiratory system at that level, you would start acclimating to a new level. Well, that is indicated here. So many people are surpassing the astral plane. As they do, they hear voices, they see faces, they have weird dreams, they have thought forms. And the hearing voices, this is what can really freak people out. Are you literally on your ascension trajectory where you're literally passing through that old neighborhood where you used to live. But with new connections, with a new light body, with many more chakras opening, the old paradigm is closing. Now, this is another thing that upsets people. And so many people believe that it's not accessible to them anymore. What they may not realize is they're actually closing out some nightmarish stuff things they wouldn't need to relive, things they wouldn't want to see it again. They've put some distance between those old things because that was the way they went down. They're, they went down and they're going back up that way. Even if that vague memory is giving them a sense of loss, of leaving people behind, of saying goodbye to these old places and times. Now, if we go to the middle part here, we have had connections that have been ancient to the fifth dimension. In fact, the fifth dimension in many ways supports life, new life, giving birth, the conception. It's sort of like having a cable that reaches down and supports and lifts and, you know, gives the energy necessary, gives that infusion of 5D love and energy to spark it up here. Science doesn't really know this. Science will say, hey, why do people's heart keep beating? How does a conception of a child, like where is that spark of life? Because people, when they do, they can feel it. They can sense it. Even if there is a scientific explanation of like, you got two things that go together and they start just multiplying and dividing. Yes, but what is that initial spark of life? It is love. It is energy from another level from the source. So if we go to the middle here, this is a transitional space and that transitional space is always a leveled up experience. It is not the ultimate level though. And that's what I'm here to help you with. 
There is something that is happening for people there at that level. They're making choices. They're making either healthy choices or choices to stay. They're not falling down again. You know why? They're not going to drag down the rest of us who are ascending. I'm going to say it again. They will not drag down the rest of us who are ascending and want to do the work and want to do what we're here for. So this transitional space, which is for adjustment, there's many things you're doing in this transitional space. First of all, you go up and you kind of land, you descend a little bit, and it takes a little bit of doing to learn how to do that, to practice it. The main thing with your new light body is it's got a lot of bells and whistles. You have to practice. Practice makes perfect, but practice helps the expansion and helps you adjust it at will. You're not working on a, a basis where you have no personal will. This is another misconcept. Your personal will is getting much higher aligned so that it is for the greater good of you, yourself, and for the others. There is adjustment, acclimation, purging, getting the metaphysical body ready, and also for resting before the next level. So you can notice changes in your sleep, the quality of your sleep, your appetite. You may sense or feel that you need to do, you know, maybe refrain from eating for a few hours because you're adjusting. You can feel that you're purging out something really deep and big. Now, during this time, this will happen with a, a vast number of people, not the entire collective, because mind you, some have not been activated or going to the next place. Many of the things that are believed about ascending, ascension, um, human evolution is that everybody's doing it at the same speed at the same time. We're all running the race, right? We're all doing the marathon. Not true. Not everyone is at the same vibration. In fact, not everyone is the same type of being. Some people don't know and some people feel like they don't care about it. It takes some kind of oomph from their soul, driven by their soul. Some people need to trip through the dirt and keep backsliding until they're like, hey, I think I'm gonna give up that addiction now. This is soul driven. And so there are those passive experiences where the soul lifts and moves the person into the next state of being or into their next stage of their ascension, which can be very recognizable. My entire repertoire has the entire year's worth of ascension information, and it's very helpful, but there are main basic things that you need to do. And honestly, yoga is not gonna cover any of them. I know some people are gonna get so upset because you know I'm bashing yoga. I am not bashing yoga. I'm saying that there is a, another level of movement, breath work, and work light body work and building up of tissues so that you can be a 5D person. Living as an ascended person is very different than living as a non-awakened, unactivated person. The other thing you have is in order to be active that you have a daily routine. You have a daily routine which maintains, it does, you don't lose ground. You won't slip, but you really won't lose ground. And how that feels, how does that feel? What do you do like three days you don't do your routine? You start feeling it, okay? You start feeling blah, oogie. Then it starts to feel very 3D again. That's what people will call it, 3D. You're no longer 3D, but you have to live and act and behave as if you are an ascended being because you're ascending. So I've broken it down into a daily routine of what to do, how to do it, what to do at certain seasons. And I guide people through this many times through my webinar groups, through my group, and that's how we do it. And there's feedback and there's questions and answers. It's great. And the dream interpretation, that's the best part when people share their dreams. Let's come back here to my diagrams. As you go through in a transitional space, and there can be more than one transitional space, this can take up to two months at a time with a gradual diminishment of the discomfort of symptoms you may have. So addressing it properly, 
means being proactive, learning how to address the symptoms, which I have the information for, depending on what your symptoms are. And medical symptoms are different than ascension symptoms. Ascension symptoms, because you're going back up the way you went down, they can mimic an illness. Now you're seeing this out there quite a lot. You're seeing it with celebrities. They're reporting their health issues. Not every which is attributable to COVID. If it were, it wouldn't be multiple symptoms or multiple systems of the body. There is a thing to know. Ascension symptoms are a part of the detoxification when we are evolving. So it's a part of evolution. We're going back up the way we went down so we can rid ourselves of this and live much more harmoniously, not carry the taint of the past. In the middle here, a person can live in the transitional space for a while before they start hitting a wall and it's time to go up again. Now this can really feel like someone is being forced to shove some of the other feelings and sensations can feel like being squeezed, compelled, pushed, prodded. Everything is propelling you forward, even if you don't know why or what is happening. But there is a new daily level of living, which is a much higher vibrational level. So this is why some people will call it a bliss state. This is why some people will say, oh, I found heaven on earth, like nothing bad is happening. I've left my karma behind me. I've left karma completely in the dust. Um, nothing karmic happens to me anymore, except if someone is still hanging on to karmic relationships, karmic jobs, for example, karmic, uh, happenings where it just repeats, history is repeating itself. You need to address that, okay? And the best way is have a session so that we can get this addressed very expediently, talk to you about what to do, give you guidance for the ongoing weeks afterwards, because we do do that. But if you look here between the distance between 3D and your leveled up state of being, your leveled up new state of being, Yes, there's a little bit of work to get there, obviously. Don't think that there's no work. Don't think that, oh, well, I, I hear this from people. They're like, I eat right. And what they're talking about is they eat three meals a day. They're not doing any intermittent fasting. They don't know how to, they don't know that they should. And that's okay. That's why I'm here. I'm here to teach it. I've been teaching it for years before I started doing these videos. Some people may say, I don't know how to breathe. Like when I was a kid, nobody ever told me. Myself, as a child, I had such bad asthma. I had to force myself to learn how. There were no respiratory therapists. I had to do it or die, do or die. So for a lot of people, they do what they have to so they don't die, but sometimes it stops there. I'm here to tell you there's an absolute new level to level up to, and it is delightful. It's like if there's a robbery in your neighborhood, it's not going to happen to you. If there's a train delay, you're not on that train. There's a diminishment of the ill effects of living at the lower vibrational levels, and it's very pleasant and gradual and it's exciting because as you do this your heart energy is what is pulling you up on a daily basis it's keeping you upbeat okay it's like beyond upbeat it's like feeling like the entire universe loves you so if this is what you would like your normal to be please let's get started please join join my group join something and let's get it going now there is a level above this which I refer to as the gathering place. What this actually is, is this is sometimes the dream time. This is where you start knowing about significant things in your life, okay? It's like a little bit like seeing the future, seeing who you're going to meet romantically, seeing things about a job that's really positive, seeing other parts of your future, like you're gonna buy a house and you kind of get an inkling of where this is. So it is a lucid state, but it is, um, it's an actual place where you're gathering up your energies, your essence, and you're getting connected. You're reconnecting 
to those parts of you that are natural and yet can seem superhuman. And above this, you have the new Earth Star 5D gateway that is connected to your crown. Not only is your crown connected, it has this connection. It also has to detach from Earth. It is a huge task for people to continue living while they still have to work, raise children, drive in traffic. How do you act and behave as an ascended activated person and still go about your business on a place where stuff keeps happening, karma keeps happening. There is a way. The base foundation to lift the body energies and connect to the four major alchemy points. This is why my work is called Four Zone Healing. There are four major alchemy points. These are not just marma points. These are points where the 5D energy and love comes in, gets distributed down and through you. It, it's kind of a down and in and an up and out because it will help you transmute or discard and dissipate ill effects very naturally. And it will help you engage. Okay. In other words, engage with life in really good, positive ways. That's not boring whatsoever. I know that sometimes people think that, you know, you have to get it out of your head. This is not just a spiritual thing. This is more like a new life. It's not even lifestyle. That's the difference. It's your bill. Do you want a new body? You can have a new body now. Let's get it going. Do you want a new life? You can have a new life now. Let's get it going. Do you want a new love relationship? You can do that. Let's get it going. Okay. Those are the active parts. The passive parts will keep happening the active parts. So each one of the four zones manages separate you know, separate sections of the body, but in, within those sections are systems, systems that you need, your respiratory system, your respiratory and your heart system, your circulatory system, they all need to work together. Your respiratory with your lymph system, they need to work together. Now, many people have not even realized these parts can harmonize with each other because it's never happened for them. You know, if they have some kind of malady or illness, you can't eat gluten, you can't have lactose. I have solutions for those things. Getting your celiac plexus jump started is one of the most rewarding things that I've ever been able to help people with because they've been able to enjoy real dairy when they want to at will for themselves on their terms as they see fit and enjoy it and not feel shame or guilt or remorse or that they're going to ruin something or be in the bathroom for hours and days. So you can live in as, as an ascended person and you can be free. Be free to have new relationships with everything. That's kind of how it is. Your light body is here and you're relating to the things from within that. How do I relate to foods? How do I relate to my job? How do I lift the things at my job so that it matches me? And I'm not going down to meet it down in those low vibe levels. No, 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 that's not for you. Even if you get started with yoga, I have a whole new set of exercise movements and channel opening movements included with breath work to help you integrate and easily dissipate things. It's very different to do this because it has to spiral. It has to have a certain movement that we're creating. It's not as linear as those chakras look like. So stay tuned to more of my videos where you can uh, learn more. And thanks so much for watching reach out so that I can help you with your ascension. You can email me at fourzonehealing at gmail.com. I'm Patricia located in Chicago. I'm a total people person. I hope you have a wonderful day.